Mr. Clarence Hawkins, says, I miss my heterosexual relationship. It was one of the reasons for moving back to Chicago from Atlanta. If we're hidden, it, if we're hidden, I don't want them to know me, you and your wife are getting it. Clarence. <laughs> Johnny, what say you? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I can't be able to do it. No. Oh, oh, oh. I just can't do it. So, okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's Labor Day weekend. Happy Labor Day to everybody. Hope everybody's having an amazing Labor Day weekend. Um, but in the city of Atlanta, it is Black Gay Pride weekend. And, you know, it took me. Three hours, 14 seconds, and I just got back home 10 seconds ago from Linux. I was just trying to go to Crate and Barrel, and it's just too many people out. I mean, I, it's just too many people out. I, I'm not here for the whole scene, but people are out and about. Um, my, my question is, how are y'all social distancing? If they can do Match.com virtually, why can't y'all do Pride virtually? That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I mean, and then, you know, the the, the food demon hit me and David this morning around 3 o'clock this morning. <laughs> and, um, we was home. Oh. We was oh. Okay. Oh. So, Wait. So Roy said nobody's it. that proud. I'm outdone. How? <laughs> we we decided to get up and go to the diner. We went to the diner that's open 24 hours a day. And come on, diner. Home, you know, normally be like one car. One car in the little park. You got a little lot. piece we, of breakfast. Baby, we pulled in. It was a whole smuggish board of people in the parking lot. And we went in, like David said, does the place smell like weed? I said, you know what? I forgot what weekend it was. So my synopsis of the takeaway weekend is, I just hope next week the news story doesn't read Atlanta's a new hotspot. That's all I'm saying for COVID. I, I got, listen, I got I got something to say. What about you? I think there is a social responsibility that I'm very disappointed in with this mm -hmm that they're having this weekend that they typically have what is every every year this this weekend which is black great black blah, 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 black gay pride in Atlanta on Labor Day weekend and i am disappointed at the lack of social responsibility when it comes to them actually doing this like you mentioned in person with the conditions that's going on with covid and everything else and how we're fighting everything that's going on i would have thought being that this is not necessarily gay pride weekend, but black gay pride weekend, that we would have done a better job being socially responsible in not doing those things. It's like, come on, y'all. Come on. No. What, what, what? Oh, what I I must play, but, but I must play devil's advocate. I'm just providing a different perspective. Oh. And I got a sanitized phrase for you. So what you got? <laughs> come on, Brandy. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying there may be people who can think, I'm not saying I think this way. I'm just saying that there may be people who may say, well, I've been cooped up since February, since March. I ain't been able to get out. We've, We've all been, been cooped, cooped up, up though. But what is, what is it about this up. weekend as to why you feel like you need to be there in person? This is what they've always done. Yes, it is what, what they what, But what is it? But what are you doing? That's my question. Like, tell it me. Here's the thing. Hey, tell me, what are they doing? Here's because the thing. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Man. Here's the thing. What us, and I'm, I'm going to speak from a, a homosexual man who lives that lifestyle. What we miss and what people miss when they go to Pride is Pride really is supposed to be educational. But they miss that part. It's oh, a, okay. Yeah. It, they miss that part. Pride, at Pride, you have authors, you have book festivals, you have classes about HIV and AIDS, you have classes of all type of stuff, and the girls don't go to it. All they think about is putting on their makeup, they sequence and they pumps, going to the club and looking hot food. I'm just going to call it what it is. And they do this every single year. So, you know, I'm in a different state right now. I'm in Louisiana, and it's Pride Weekend across, you know, uh, across the country in some places, but I'm in a place right now they ain't thinking about no pride. They thinking about people sheltering people for a hurricane that just happened. So stay your tail at home because we still are in a pandemic. You ain't I, you just can't be that press to put on some lashes and glitter and go pump go pump the club. And like you said, next week we're gonna hit Atlanta hot box. It's because of all the gays. I'm sorry. It's
I, I have to give you that one, friend. I, I'm just saying, like, I, you 100% on target. Now, to be fair, co-hosts uh, and people in the comment section, and now, now I, I let it go last week, but y'all know I'm the house of shade, so I, I have to call it out. If you're going to be in the comment section, keep your comments tastefully. All right? All right. Praise Jesus. Keep going. Uh-oh. <laughs> But I, I, I agree, y'all. Listen, I agree with Chilling Mo. Right now, where we are globally, it is just socially irresponsible. It's so, and, and it's it's just irresponsible. It's like the better places get, like Atlanta, Tennessee. It's like you do stuff like this, and it it only makes it worse because they ain't out there with masks on. You know they're not. Mm -hmm. no. they, they got them in their hand. They want to show their L'Oreal and Mary Kay, which nobody will no more. Hello. But what well, do we and I, say about going go you know, go oh, no. <laughs> no, I, I was just gonna speak to you know, we want to be taken seriously. I believe the LGBT community wants to be taken seriously, black gays want to be taken seriously. This is the direct opposite of that. Um, all the things that we're dealing with, there are so many other things that we could have done with our mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. to keep right. everybody safe, right? You know, right. so. Well, yeah, I'd point out that it's not the same at because there's more than one pride. There's more than one gay pride around the U.S. every yeah. year. There is mm -hmm. one specifically for the African American community, yes. But then mm -hmm. there's a general one that mm -hmm. pulls out more of your um, your um, Caucasian crowd. Now, mm -hmm. that's not to say that they don't dress up. That's not to say that they don't put on their glitters and pump it through the streets. That's not to say that either. But what is happening at theirs, at the general one, is the more educational value that Wes mm -hmm. is speaking to. And yeah. then the the uh, one that's held for most of us, the black and brown, <laughs> they ain't going to those educational things. They're mm -hmm. just trying to be seen and trying to see and, and, and hook up. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're that's really giving a... a, a you're feeding into the stereotype of what other people who are not in the LGBT community thinks about the LGBT community when all you see is foolishness running rampant. <laughs> <laughs> but I will speak to one of the comments uh, from Clarence Hawkins. The LGBTQ community should be taken seriously. LGBTQ people helped advance Voters' Rights Act as well as ho a host of other achievements, and he's right. So we do have people that are actually serious about who they are, what they stand for, despite mm -hmm. who they love. When I talked about you know the, the people that do and have a certain lifestyle, I did mention what they do on Sunday. They, they stop by the church. They might slip through. They might not stay, get saved, or join. But they might <laughs> slip through. Uh, uh, the church. So, which brings us to our main topic for today. That is... Let's talk about it! <laughs> Mo! What it. is you doing for it? Mo is looking like, what? <laughs> we, we, we gotta talk about it. We gotta talk about it. So I was having a It's the song for me. For me, I think that we were having a conversation earlier this week about um, so many people are still experiencing or even trying to get over and get through what we know in the black community who have been in church for a long time, this subject of church hurt. Mm -hmm. Still trying to get through it, still trying yeah. to figure out what that means, what life is going to look like, and all that good stuff. So I think that it's, I want to be able to help the people. Mm -hmm. Okay. I want to be help. I want to be able to help you get through this time of trying to figure it all out. <laughs> it, and it doesn't matter what type of hurt you experience in the church. I think the first thing that we need to realize is that the church didn't hurt you. Mm -hmm. People mm -hmm. in the church hurt you. Mm -hmm. Because I think when we when we experience that church hurt, we we internalize it and we say, you know what, I'm never going back to church again. So many people feel that same way. And you, this may even be you that I'm talking to. If you feel that way, like I'm never going back to church because they're all the same. 
Ain't mm-hmm. nobody right up in there. They are all mm-hmm. sick. And we've heard that analogy that the church should be seen as a hospital. Y'all heard that before? Mm-hmm. Oh, sure. That they that they all they they all sick from from the pulpit to the front door. Mm-hmm. But but most of us are still in. We either serve in ministries in church. We uh, participate as lay mm-hmm. members in church. We give our time and talents and tithe to the church. So Mo, yep, I'm calling on you, boo. What what we what, what we got? Yep, you first. Tie your time. Church and I ain't never going back. <laughs> you know, we we all have the stories um, that that talk about where we've been hurt. Um, <clears throat> just a little bit of my background. I grew up as a pastor's kid. My father was the pastor from the time I was born, even though my dad is, he passed away in 2011. I am still considered the church baby. Okay. Um, I, I wasn't, it wasn't until later in life that I understood what church hurt meant. Uh, but the reality is, is mm-hmm. that, you know, hurt people hurt people and not even to be cliche, there are, there are, you have to be able to discern during that season of, of your life, is this something I'm supposed to stay in or is this an opportunity for me to flourish somewhere else? Um, always seeking God, even in mm-hmm. even through your pain is important. Um, listening to those who have who have had the same negative experience that you have had that try to convince you to stay to not stay where you are. You don't know where God can lead you. You don't know how God can bless you. You don't know anything. So always having that discernment, I always believe is key. Because if, if you move too soon or if you move not quick enough, um, there is room for error there. So um, church hurt, it happens. Um, there is a reason and an explanation for all things. Uh, but just trying to get an understanding for yourself and then seeing how God is calling you where you are is important as well. Yeah. So I want to address that comment that we just saw from Tanya Thompson. I know Tanya. I've spent a lot of time with Tanya. I'm, even though I'm saddened to hear that she said she's never going back, I completely understand it. Mm-hmm. I completely okay. understand from her perspective as to why she feels the way she feels. Because she's heard a lot of the same churchy dialogue. That this whole I'm I, I never I'm never going back. You know that the church has hurt me, or you know you can't. The church is a hospital. Everybody's sick. We need to treat it that way. You know, th- no, that's not true. And I will stand against that. That the church is not a hospital. The church we hear it again. We hear the, that the church is a place for healing. Church is a place for healing. No, it's not. No, it's not. Church yeah. is a tra- church is a place for treatment. Mm. That's good. That's good, David. That's good. It's not when even if you think about it as a hospital, if you go to the hospital, that means there is trauma that needs to be treated, and that's what you get. That's what you're supposed to get when you're in church. You're supposed to get treated, not healed. That's healing good. happens in a rehabilitation center. Healing happens when they send you home, and if you're a believer, healing even happens in hospice is after death. That's, That's good, David. Healing takes place. That's but good. Church is for treatment. Let's yeah. talk about it. Let's talk about it. Uh, and so, and you got to do your due diligence in making sure that you know the word and you're studying to show yourself approved. You know what I mean? Like you have to make sure that you just aren't solely just dependent on um, the preacher and or pastor or whoever you may be listening mm-hmm. to as said church or what have you. Make sure that you're doing your due diligence to study and to know the word for yourself. Mm-hmm. Because sometimes, a lot of times that can, that will help you um, from getting hurt in certain ways. That will help you get a better understanding of the word or when they talk about certain subjects and things like that, you won't be turned off about it. Like, for instance, tithe and offering that that turns a lot of people off when you talk about it. However, but if you don't study it or if you don't read it um, to get an understanding of what it really means, then you may be turned off. By it. That's why you have to do your due diligence and research. It's just like any other subject. Or if you're in school, you have to study. You have to read. You have to be able to pass the test. So you got to know what subject you're talking about. That's so, good. you know. 
Tanya, I, I, I completely agree with you. Baby, I, I tell her, listen. Tanya if, I could have, if I could get Tanya on here right now, she would blow. Oh! What? Oh, that that was heavy. <laughs> yeah. That what happened when they write the wrong prescription? But then you have to be able to trust the person that's writing the prescription to that for them to know your condition and your body. Mm-hmm. Everybody mm-hmm. can't write a prescription. A, a person who but just because a prescription is written don't mean you got to take it. it. It's suggested. You're absolutely right. It mm-hmm. doesn't mean that you got to take it, and it, but it would suggest that the person that's writing the prescription knows something about your condition. Mm-hmm. You, specifically. If you have studied uh, orthopedics, that's for feet. If I got a heart condition, why am I taking a prescription from somebody that studies feet? Wow, she just she just said you would let me go home and pray when you should have told me to go home and make a therapy appointment. But I can't give you my tithe if I'm in therapy. My God, yeah. I told- t- t- think it's personal though. You know. It- that is. T- tithing mm-hmm. is personal, so and that's that's a whole other subject. I think we, we can't get on today, but that that that's a personal. I um, yeah, I was I was but, a, level, a level of church hurt, and G- I won't name the person's name, but Jill, me, me and Jill know this person, um, mutually, and I think Melissa um, as well, actually, huh? Melissa as well, and Melissa as well, and I think too with that with that particular hurt, it was. You allow somebody to lie on me, sit me down, but don't give me a chance to clear my name Mm -hmm. where I was lied on. And so if you had any Mm -hmm. kind of value in me, if you trusted me in any kind of way, I am one that I don't mind being reprimanded. So if you were going to sit me down, fine, but do it the right way and don't think your mean is to do it. Do it. If you're going to do it, do it as my leader. And I'm a firm believer of for anybody who's in that capacity, you can be a preacher, a phenomenal preacher, but a horrible shepherd. And there's a difference. There so is. I had to get up from up on under that. I, I I can't be up under somebody who um who who shepherds their flock horribly. You can yeah. preach, you can preach down. I can, I could care less about that. I, I'm I've grown past that on a spiritual note. But if you can't lead your people the proper way, whatever. And I'm willing to bet that there are majority of people. I'm sorry, Jill. Go I'm ahead. willing to bet that there is majority of people that experience church hurt. Majority of them were in leadership. Oh yeah, absolutely. It wasn't yeah. just a lay member, right? It was person in leadership that got a chance right. to be behind the velvet rope. Mm-hmm. Well, and what? and that's why I I am a person that really takes what I do seriously because you can't do any of it without integrity. Mm-hmm. You if you cannot, you you shouldn't. I don't believe you can, but there are people that can still sleep at night. I don't know how they do it. Right. I just don't. Um, and that's not a judgment. That's just straight facts. Um, the ability to take advantage of people knowing what you're doing and then going to bed at night acting as if it is okay um, is just incredulous to me. But I take what I do seriously. And I've also, through my experiences, through some of the hurt I've been given the ability to to, to discern when I'm not in the right place. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. So had I not gone through those situations, had I not dealt with that particular type of hurt, I wouldn't have recognized it. So it's all a part of life and that's not to justify it because it's yeah. absolutely wrong, but it but you have to find everything that we do is purposeful. Everything that happens has a reason, has a purpose. We may not understand it while we're in it, but once we get to the other side, we see how God was trying to show us, shape us, mold us, and et cetera, et cetera. I'm sorry, Jill, go ahead. No, you're, no go ahead. I was waiting for you to finish. I didn't want to uh, cut you off. No, I'm done. Um, I guess my question is, where, where, do, where does restoration come in for the church? Why why is there always like a lack? Like we're always so quickly to want to restore just other people for certain scenarios or just certain things that may have happened, like in the workplace or just what have you. But when it comes to the church, there's always this uh just disdain of just like I'm just done with it completely. And there's just no not even an inkling of a, a chance of wanting to 
you know, be restored somewhere. Uh, I want to piggyback off of something Tanya just stated. Uh, T, if you'll put on the screen, she just mentioned about the COVID example. That that, that yeah, comment. Please that she do. Um, so she basically said, I don't believe all preachers are wrong. However, I do. Um, I really do. I really, I think she meant, I really don't have the time to go from doctor to doctor and I'm dying. However, in real life, if I'm going to a doctor and I ain't cool with her, I'm going to switch doctors and I'm going to go to somebody until I am comfortable. That's just me. Same thing with the workplace. If I'm, I'm just not going to sit back and allow it, I'm going to speak up until I've spoke up enough and then it's, it's time for me to move on. And I think when it comes to the church, though, when, when do we get to the point where it's just like, OK, I can't put every, I can't put all churches in one box. That's a myopic view of the church. And, that, and I don't think that's fair to uh, all churches, denominations, preachers, whatever, um, putting them all just in said box and then just thinking that they're all the same when they're not. You know, that's um, I had to personally get to that place. And mm -hmm. it's, it's, it, it comes with spiritual growth. It comes with spiritual growth right. and personal growth to get to that point to be like, you know what, I was hurt here. But that may not be the case with my next place. Um, that I, I, I desire to be shepherd in. And, you know, and when I go to that next place, or when I find that next place, maybe I just take my time on indulging myself into the ministry. Let me just make sure, like most said, let me make sure, use my discernment to make sure this place is for me before I go that far. So right. I had to learn that, you know, along my spiritual path as well. It just, it's about growth. Yeah. So when you talk about growth, I think that's very important. And I think that everybody should evolve and transition into, we should all be seeking to evolve into what we are ultimately trying to become. Mm -hmm. the, our, 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 our authentic self. And mm -hmm. that includes ministry. I know for me, I have been in music ministry for most of my life. And my position in the church allowed me to have a certain type of relationship with each and every pastor. I'm over the music department. So I am charged with making sure this service is guided in a way that it achieves the mission that it was supposed to when it was sent out. And the Bible says God would not allow his word to go out and come back void. So I took my position very seriously, but I also understood that my relationship with each pastor was different. Mm -hmm. Each choir was mm -hmm. different. Each music department was right. different. Right. Each city was different. And so, but I also noticed a common theme that when I got close to those pastors, I was able to see them and their humanity. And before now, when I was younger, I couldn't handle it. Mm. I could not handle seeing their humanity because it contained mm. no humility. Mm. It didn't contain it at all. But mm -hmm. I was still expected because I was over the music ministry to do my job. Mm -hmm. Not only the job that I was being paid for, but the job mm -hmm. that I was ministry prescribed for. That's right. Because I loved what I did. I love yeah. it to its core. I love it. Anybody mm -hmm. that knows me know I love directing choirs. Mm -hmm. But when the choir sings its last note and all the musicians have packed up, and we time it's time to transition from the church to the restaurant or the pastor's house or the study. You know, that's what the Baptist church calls it, the pastor's study. Come on, study. study. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we I get a chance to see that pastor not on that pulpit. And sometimes they just as big as drinkers, cussers, smokers, liars, cheaters. But it's I could not understand and could not comprehend the hypocrisy. And I think we as human beings, I don't care what church you go to, I don't care what orientation you're in, I don't care your gender, your ethnicity, humans, will, we can forgive mm -hmm. and forget mm -hmm. a lot of things. Hypocrisy is not one of them. It's, it's not. not. You can... Oh! Yeah, I can't do it. <laughs> I got a quick one. <laughs> I got a question, and this this will go for Mo and Jill as well. For a person who has been in multiple roles, um, like you were describing, because um, it may be somebody who's in that position, David, who's a minister of music and health, 
um, um, relationships with multiple past for multiple choirs. How does one individual manage that type of weight? So I think it again, it you have to have the desire mm -hmm. and it has to be innate to want to do the right thing. That integrity right. piece that Mo was talking about, you have to have it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Even if the person, if you're in leadership and the person above you does not have integrity, your integrity is still on the line. Because mm -hmm. people are following you while That's you good. follow them. That's good. So even if they can't follow him, because when you're in leadership, you are still in a pastoral position. You may not lead people in, in their souls to Christ, but you are leading them in their in the perspective ministry, whether it's choir, whether it's nursing, whether it's ushering, whether it's deacon, finance, you're still leading people. Mm -hmm. And you have a responsibility. Mm -hmm. You have yeah. a responsibility because people are looking at you. They are following you. Whatever you're saying to them, they want to be seeing an example of what to do. Not don't just yeah. do as I say and not as I do. No, I mm -hmm. want to be able to do as you do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It's a um my my cousin just wrote on here, "Hey Kim, good to see you." Um but she said that the church unfortunately does not have all the answers. Mm -hmm. That we we just don't. We we and it's the we look at the church in our especially in the black community, it is everything that we are because that's all we were allowed to have. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's all we were allowed to have. So we put all of our eggs in mm -hmm. the basket. And I'm not saying that we don't trust God, we don't believe God, but we've also talked about mental health and different types of things um, that are happening in our society where the church may not necessarily have the direct answer, but we can lead you to someone who can help you along with the prayer, along mm -hmm. with the scripture, along yes. with the experience, along with the tradition. You can't, like I said a few weeks ago, you can't have too, too much of one. They all yeah. work together. And so having that balance, I yeah. think is important. That's something that my dad gave me. Yes, I love God. He heard my cry and he's pitied every groan, but I also love to go to the movies too. Mm -hmm. yeah, can you, know, you put that one last comment up from from Tanya Thompson? The preachers, preacher Tanya says, preachers or leaders are the only careers that don't require continual education. Wow. When a doctor accidentally causes the death of a person, there is a process which begins with accountability. I'm gonna say this. I think it depends on where you go to church or uh, where you are. I can tell you for a fact that a lot of churches now are even requiring for the pastors to have not just a bachelor's, most of them now want them to even have a master's degree. Mm -hmm. um, just like a lot of corporate organizations, they want to see that master's because they want to know that you actually have studied, like I said mm -hmm. earlier, to show you prove that you know what you're talking about, that you know, uh, you know, how to. Uh, you know, dive into text and uh, talk about the Greek and just all that stuff or whatever. You know what I mean? So um, I, I think that's a misconception. Like when you like, and, and I don't want to say, let me, let me think about the word I want to say, how I want to say, I don't want to say like, like smaller churches, but like may, maybe your more traditional churches that have been around the preachers been there for 50 trillion years, things like that or what have you, you know, they're just used to doing the same things, but churches, that are um, open to evolving and change and things like that are requiring not only the pastor, hold on, each leader as well to continue educating in, in some kind of capacity, whether it's trainings, um, whether it's, uh, you know, we do leadership conferences, uh, whether we enroll you into a conference or if there's a conference going on somewhere that we send you to or what have you. Um, I, I know as far as from a, my eye standpoint and Mo, I know they definitely do that at Brown, that that is a requirement for, you know, not only the pastor, but for our leaders as well. So I think it all depends on where you go to church mm -hmm. and what the requirements are of said organization. I, and I 100 percent agree with that. I definitely want to piggyback off that. Joe. It is definitely where you go to church. And I think what you're referring to from a branding standpoint you're talking about ministries that are actually operating as a business. And you have so many churches that the folks are called. They had a conversation with God and God didn't have a conversation with anybody else but them. And they're called to do this work. And when you're being called to do certain work, what 
rather than having a degree to do certain work, you're going to get a different result. And so I don't think it's about a big church or a small church. And then there are some people who are just bored and who are power hungry. And they think it's a good idea to start a church because the day ends with why. Let's just call it what it is. I'm not trying to be funny, but Brown, Jill, you and Tim, you're a different bracket of church. It's just a different mindset. You still got these people who think that the family should run the church. Everybody ain't called. Every, you're absolutely right. And I think that one of the last comments uh, that Tiger spoke about, and when we think about having the answers, the church not having the answers, mm -hmm. is it that the church doesn't have the answers or is it that the church really does have the answers and we're just not listening? Because the answer may go against their bottom line. So if the if the answer is continual education, who's paying for it? Whose responsibility is that? For me, I the knowledge that I gain is for me and I can take it anywhere. So I wouldn't mind paying for continual education because whether I use it here at your church or somebody else's church, the knowledge is mine. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that took the course. I'm the one that gained the knowledge. But I think something that we don't do in those um, spaces is actually, we send people off to conferences all the time, but we never know what they learned when they were there. What, what did you learn? <laughs> How do we know you actually were educated? How to feel, well, and I think you have to do your due diligence in researching said conference that you're sending people to. Like, don't just send people to a conference because the title sounds great and it's just like the WOW conference or the whatever conference. Like, actually do your due diligence and research these conferences. What are they about? Do you mm -hmm. know friends or do you know people that have attended these conferences before? Who did they learn? Who are the leaders? Who are the people that are teaching in these conferences? Are they viable people? Do they uh, do they know what they're talking about? You know what I'm saying? Like, what, are, what is their history? So I think there, there comes a personal responsibility a lot of times as well. Like, we always want to put stuff on the church, but there's a, pos a, a personal responsibility that we have to take as well as people when it comes to, one, pick, picking and choosing who we want our leader to be. Um and making sure that we're doing our due diligence. We just don't go to one church and it's like, okay, we're one and done. This is where I want to be. No, make sure actually you're sitting back, you're praying about it and, and really um, uh, asking God, like, is this where I'm supposed to be? And you need to ask God to sit back sometimes. Like if you're in a position to where you're uncomfortable um, or where you know, you think it may be time for you to move, well then pray about that and ask God, is it time for me to move? But if it is time for you to move, move, but you can move, you can move without noise. So move. If it's time for you to move, if it's time for you to, you know, go to another ministry or what have you. And it could be for nothing, even just say nothing even happen. It's just time for you. Mm -hmm. This ain't where I need to be no more. I'm not really learning mm -hmm. what I want to what I need to learn here for my own personal, personal growth. Mm -hmm. Then well, you I need to take that. I, I needed to get from yeah, this. Exactly. some churches are just incubators. They're, yeah. not there to, they're not there to give you meat and potatoes. It's mm -hmm. only there and designed to give you milk. Right. And, and so at some point, yeah. you get past milk. You it's like stepping milk. stone. Yeah, it's stepping stones. It's just like when you go to grade school and then you graduate to middle school and then high school. There comes to a certain point. It's just like, you. this ain't the old school. It may not be meant for you to be at said church for 40 years no more. Because you know got, what I mean? Got you got to really listen to your, you really got to really listen to God and what he's telling you, you in do. regards to where your placement is. And, and what got, your purpose is in said place. Absolutely. And we got to understand that the, the, the physical church is nothing but a building. Mm -hmm. We are the church. Absolutely. Again, if you're just joining us, if you've been with us this whole time, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for joining. We the people talking.